This is the freshest take on Pokemon Emerald that you'll find anywhere right now. From map modifications to new characters and Pokemon up through the Hisui region, Parallel Emerald exists as a throwback to the classic game design with current generation battle mechanics. And of course, None of it is easy. Parallel Emerald replaces some of the gym leaders we know and love with Frontier Brains. Roxanne and Brawly take a back seat to Greta and Brandon in this one. Still, some of the old heads hold down their respective gyms with Watson's new double battle team revamped to compete with the best of them. So obviously, I'm trying to nuzlocke this one. The game opens up with completely random starters, generation one through eight all available. Sure, there's a fire, water, and grass starter in every bag, but Birch is living Groundhog Day until we figure out which starter is going to defeat this game. Turtwig was our obvious first choice. Now, this game does have enforced level caps, and depending on the game difficulty you choose, it can vary. We were running against the odds mode, the game's hardest and most restrictive setting that we weren't really intended to beat. Our level cap was going to be 15. And look, I know that I usually introduce every encounter and talk about their value and how cute and cool they are, but spoiler, this was going to be a bloodbath. I guess you should meet Matt though, the Cricketune who carried us through early game. As it turns out, Fury Cutter sweeps the entirety of everything up to the first gym. This was good news as Cricketune was in his prime here. If he wasn't good now, he never would be good. Greta was first and her team was pretty cool. Nothing over the top, just five solid dark type mons that were set to give us a challenge. Opening with Impotent, Cricketune was doing super duper damage with its super effective moves. We had this in the bag. Yes, in this hack, fairies don't resist bugs as they shouldn't, and bugs resist fairies. Of course, Greta switched in Murkrow to ruin everything. She wasn't going to be giving us any gifts in this fight. And I'll be honest, I felt like I deserved a gift there, but... More than me, you know who really deserves a gift? My mom. I promise we'll get back to the gameplay in just a moment, but Mother's Day is closer than you think, guys. When I first started streaming on Twitch, mom was one of my three concurrent viewers every stream to help me reach affiliate. And that's why I'm excited to be working with the sponsor of today's video, Holzkern. With Mother's Day right around the corner, Holzkern's selection has everything I need. Based in Austria, Holzkern has over 1,000 products to choose from, each of them one of a kind thanks to the natural materials that they use. Earlier this year, I got this Asin Leadwood watch from them that I wear every day. It's super comfy and I love the way it looks. But while Holzkern started with watches, They've expanded their catalog to include jewelry, sunglasses, and their signature unit cases. Holzkern offers free express worldwide shipping from the beautiful Vienna with custom fees on them. Products arrive within two to five business days. Treat your mom to something truly unique and scan the QR code in this video or click the link in the description. Order before May 7th to get your products delivered before Mother's Day and use my code WACKO for an exclusive 15% off of your purchase site-wide. Again, thank you to Holzkern for sponsoring this video. Let's figure out how we're going to kill that Murkrow. Yeah, those the way of the road. Oh, that is the perfect, perfect, perfect range for that air cutter to hit. Vex, how you doing? That's a great crit. My God. Oh, we were in trouble. We were in trouble to get out of that like that. Oh. Stunky was a menace. With only two moves, you'd think that Poison Tail and Thief would be trivial obstacles at best. Wrong. The skunk was stealing my berry juices, eating them in front of me, doing enough damage to force me to switch out, rinsing and repeating. I finally thought I was making progress after sending in my own Stunky, but then it switched out on Acid Spray into Pawniard. Cricketune's Fury Cutter was pretty electric in taking that one down, and now in Swarm, we were able to use the boosted move to delete a Hound Hour as well. But Barrel brought the heat to Stunky, then Impidimp, and the gates to mid game were blown open. Or so I thought. Little did I know that every decision I made up to this point in the game served one purpose and one purpose only preparing for the mysterious second gym leader. We did have quite a bit to do before that battle, however, including saving Pico, making our way to a completely overhauled Duford City, and collecting a horde of cool encounters to bolster the team. But we could only delay the inevitable for so long. Brandon, or as I call him, Ugly Grass Guy, has a ton of fun gimmicks to play around, including the tandem that drives the fight in Technician Breloom and Triage Shinotic. Now, remember how I said I should have been preparing this entire time for this specific fight? Spoiler, I did not do that. 
at all. First turn, Krikatoon obliterated the opening Stealth Rock setting Lilip. Then, after allowing Breloom to beat the snot out of most of my team, I let our early game connoisseur fall to the punchy mushroom. Karkul avenged our friend, and an inverted scale Snover stepped in. But wacko, what does inverted scales mean? Ah yes, I should have explained that. It means the sky is down and the floor is up and Snover's defensive type chart is backwards so now it 4 times resists fire. But hey, good news. Since this hack tried to rebalance the types we know and love, ice types now have a water resistance, as does grass normally, so this guy is 4 times weak to water moves and water pulse is about to hit like a truck. And as a reward for beating that, Shinodich with priority draining Kiss and Mega Drain smacked the heck out of my progress like LeBron chasing behind me on a fast break. Back to the lab for take two. Hey, you. You're finally awake. Ugh. Where am I? Back in Little Root, I made a pact with myself. I was never, ever going to ever select a non-fire starter ever again. Of course, having the advantage over the grass gym leader only matters if I make it that far. Good news though, you're always slower. It went bubble smack, okay. This should be guaranteed bubble smack. No, why? Why would it do that? That doesn't make sense to do. It was faster than me. Wait, does that help me at all? Oh, it's the fine. Okay, yeah, never mind. That's a, that's a wipe. We are faster, so air cutter from us will have a chance to hit first. We have to take it. Oh my god. Don't, don't kill us. Don't kill Natu. Don't kill Natu, please. It wasn't until attempt eight that I saw Brandon, and when I did, I got treated like fancy restaurant salmon. Smoked, guys. I got smoked. Introducing attempt 12, our third try at the Hedgelord Brandon. Isaac the Cricketune was tough enough to KO the opening Lilith before it could set up Stealth Rocks. Now, knowing the Breloom was looking for the speed advantage, a pivot through Pawniard on Rock Tomb into Fletchender on Mock Punch allowed us to outspeed and acrobatics the beast. Really funny in my opinion, Bubble Screlp was a weapon against this inverted scale Snover, allowing Toracat to finish the job with Bite. Honestly, I was very happy to see the Shinodich in next, but the dumb mushroom put both Toracat and Fletchender to sleep. But Brandon wasn't ready because Challenger came to play and woke up on the first turn it could. Acrobatics was just so strong, and Fletchender was proving to be the most important encounter up to this point in the game. Isaac buried the final Pharisee and Wacky, and the makings of a run were official. Off to Slave Fort, there was some fun story stuff to do, including heading to a new location on the map known as Froster Island. There's a guaranteed Magikarp encounter in the water if you fish here, so you better take it. We plowed through boss battles against our rivals and root trainers, we picked up a bunch of cool guys, and we stepped up to Watson, the third gym leader. Was I ready for this? Watson. It's a double battle! GG's! GG's! It's over! It's over! <laughs> yeah, we were gonna need to plan for that one next time. We just got torn apart turn by turn until there was nothing left of our oh-so-promising team. But hey guys, I'm a glass half full kind of guy, and we were now clearing Brandon pretty consistently, making it back to Watson just two attempts later. Opening with Emolga and Toxtricity, I relied heavily on Ice Human Lantern to get the speed advantage while Ampharos chipped the entire battlefield with Discharge, which also hit and healed our Volt Absorb teammate. Eventually, Ampharos sat at half HP and had to get out of there. I swapped in Donphan, who hated the sludge bomb that Tox used. Snobunism avenged the elephant, killed Toxtricity, and then, and this is very surprising, did not survive Chloroblast Electrode the next turn. Devastated and shocked, I asked Trevenant to take over. will o -Wisp nullified the damage output of the Luxray on the floor, and Electrode succumbed to Chloroblast Recoil. Probopass had nothing on our Hisuian Lilijant, and neither did the ensuing Rotom Wash. Luxray, who we'd kept on the floor intentionally this entire time, finally passed away at the hands of Lilijant. That was three whole badges. The journey north to Falarbor was cool. The map was restructured to make certain fights mandatory, and also, it's just kind of fun to explore it. And the story is exactly the same as the vanilla games here, just with a revamped map and way tougher teams to face. Boss battles before Meteor Falls were tough. Maxi at the top of Mount Chimney was a demon. I'm gonna stop using Shadow Ball on those out of Shadow Balls. I'm gonna stop using Inferno on those out of Infernos. Shadow Ball. Inferno. 
Shadow Ball. Inferno. Oh. Shadow Ball. Flamethrower. So that's one flamethrower. And this Bird Keeper Autumn, just before we get access to Lava Ridge Town, packed a crazy amount of super tough birds. Annabelle was the new Flannery, and her team was honestly so insane. It's a normal heavy inverse gym. I don't think I understood what that meant when I first saw this game. Normal types have one resistance or immunity in ghosts. That's the only type that would hit these guys for super effective damage in this fight. Normal types don't hit a single type for super effective damage, which means every single Pokemon in existence was taking neutral or super effective damage from Stab, Body Slam, Snorlax, and Stab Return, Guts Boosted, Ursa Luna. My team wasn't great heading in. Relying on Claydol and Cacturn to play huge roles in here felt a little awkward, but I didn't have too many options, and Annabelle was not going to let me have anything in this fight. This fight opened in tedious patterns. I would switch into something for the advantage, and she would respond by doing the exact same thing. It wasn't until Ursa Luna switched in on Dragalge's adaptability sludge bomb that I finally got some real work in. Our first knockout was Volt Switch from Ampharos to finish the Angry Poo. Pinsir stopped in to say hello before paving the way for Snorlax to take center stage. Lunch from Senna's Scorch to lower this guy's attack was cute, but it didn't do that much damage. If we get unlucky here, it's just wraps. Yep, there we go. Here we go, boys. Here we go. Desperate for another chance with Senna Scorch, I used Wish Zatu to try and save the day. Sleep Talk didn't murder us that turn, and I bet on the AI not understanding that it was waking up the next turn. I wanted to play this clip, but cussing out Snorlax was not my shining moment, and Zatu died to that body slam. But hey, Senna Scorch gets in for Wish now. No Wish, dude. The Wish crack does it again! My Wish doesn't come true, dude! That's so dumb and with that annabelle stole all our pokemon stuffed us in a ups box and shipped us back to our mother's house in little root town but i wasn't done you can take me out of the fight but you you can't take the fight out of me i'm moving different this shit ain't nothing to me man i scratched and clawed my way back taking down greta brandon and watson one by one and i knocked on annabelle's door with a bigger and better plan for this inverse battle something pretty noteworthy here in against the odds mode some moves were removed from the game setup moves and weather setters specifically but also rapid spin and defog this leaves only one way to negate hazards and only three pokemon can can access it. Enter Zatu, the most important early game encounter in the game because of its ability, Magic Bounce. By opening with Breloom, I was able to invite out spikes on my switch into Zatu. This set a layer of spikes on our opponent and promised to hold the switch heavy AI accountable. And with Jinx again confronting Zatu, Dragalge was able to enter. Knowing Ursula Luna was likely in next, I didn't go for Sludge Bomb this time, but rather Dragon Tail. Thank you for the bonus chip damage, Annabelle. Tangrowth was a super hard check for this poor type Null, who perished at the grassy wall's hands. Frostlass came back in, so I went to Zatu and Psychic. Sure, Pinsir stepped in, but my timid nature was intentional and pushed our speed just over our opponents. Down with the bug, Jinx forced me to pivot into Dragalge. Then Annabelle switched to Ursa Luna again. Caracosta was not the mon for this job, so I was left to sacrifice poor Breloom. Naturally, I made the optimal play next. I sent in our own Ursa Luna and used Charm. My plan from here was to risk a crit every single turn until the opponent died of burn damage. It worked. Frostlass came out after, so I sent in Zatu. The second normal type cannon then showed itself, so I sent Ursuluna back in to take care of that too. Showing shades of shell armor Salamence from our Sterling Silver run, Isaac the oversized teddy bear stalled Snorlax for so long and wasn't really crit at all. I think Snorlax was on the floor for a whole 10 minutes. I didn't even kill it. It just at the end left. Dragalge dragon tailed as Jinx switched back into Lax. When Jinx came back out, it was going to HP Grass, a four times effective move against our boy here. Fortunately, we had Caracosta to chug the grass move. I love making new sentences. That was the first time that's ever been uttered. Dead Jinx, Zatu would sweep the rest of the fight with Psychic. That was a 
long fourth badge, but it was worth it. Attempt 18 would finally make it to Brawly, a retired leader in this ROM hack who gatekeeps the HM strength. We took advantage of Magic Bounce Zatu once more in this one, and a pivot into Senta Scorch on Primeape gave us the Flame Body proc instantly. What can I say? Senta Scorch is hot. Fun little switch on switch action here. Zatu and Blaziken now stared each other down. Psychic really blitzed the poor Electivire that took its place, and Earthquake from Pinsir finished it. Flip turn Karakasta buried Blaziken, and Talonflame bird moves clean swept the final four guys i was making so much progress in run 18 and let me tell you this next section of the game is so much fun not only are there cool and interesting fights in selena and pascal here in a custom cave known as froster cavern but there's also super fun map puzzles to try and solve i won't tell you how to beat those puzzles here you'll have to figure them out on your own but they're pretty thought provoking also joggle the creator of this hack snuck a little red fight in this guy and now for my favorite gimmick of all time in any rom hack ever this fight against the mega stone holder spencer is a single battle sometimes not all the time. Roll the dice. Who knows what the battle format will be? Seriously, this is ridiculous and so funny. Like half the time this battle is a series of neat 1v1s and the other half I'm scrambling for dear life. Oh no, we rolled the double battle. We're so cooked. That's game boys. It's over. <laughs> I'll be honest. I was cooking with this bulldoze whisk cash and bounced Yarado strat. Love that. Nice. 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 Hmm. Should have gone bulldoze there. Well, Jaros is about to take a bolt beak to the nose, I think. That's fine, right? Is what it is. Para. Here we go. Chug that. Breakfast. Nice. Oh, it's citrus berry. Use it on not. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Bulldoze from Whiskash finished Draco's ult and put Ninetales on the brink. Mama Swine out. I sent an Arcanine to fire off Accelerock. This left Whiskash to flip turn into Caracosta. A couple of weird turns later, Lucario was knocked out and Mama Swine was withered down quite a bit. And then, in the same turn, I was able to Leaf Blade Whiskash and KO Mamo with Aqua Jet. With only Mega Aboma Snow left, dead on both slots, I played my cards. The thing is, I don't know if this thing's guaranteed to Mega here, but I'm gonna assume it does. Okay, it does. I don't know, it, but if it didn't, show me. I need I need speed to be dynamic here. Show me ice shard. Show me ice shard. Show me ice shard. Thank you so much. Yes. Whoo! Guys, they kicked out my dad. Well, not really. Later in the story, you find out where dad went, but the new fifth gym leader guy is not my dad. It's Noland. He's got some interesting stuff, including Eviolite Ursa Ring and Mega Lopany. Gym number five is a standard fight. The last one in the entire game. No gimmicks, no terrains or conditions, just two dudes duking it out. We opened up with Dekadui against Wordier, which went significantly worse than I thought it would, but there's always an out, guys. No, we're chilling. I just go Leaf Blade and I crit. I'm gonna go knock off again. No, I'll leave Blade. I'll leave Blade. We'll go for the crit here. Yeah, see? Arcanine chugged Porygon's Ice Beam and a pivot into Bisharp on Zoroark allowed us to sucker punch and finish it. Two Mons down, Mega Lopany entered the fight. This has Scrappy, so I can't pivot through anything. I just go to Rex here. Now, I'll be honest. This is not ideal, walking in like this, but it's what I've got. I was very much hoping we'd walk in on Fake Out. It's not gonna go Fake Out, I don't think. I don't think it ever goes Fake Out here. Yeah. All right, cool. I have one play. It's Giga Drain. Don't crit kill me. Thanks. Another riskless fight. Yeah, true. Sweet. Thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Final Giga Drain defeated that Lopany, and the second monster graced us with its presence. In hindsight, I should have taught Deck a Dewey Feather Dance here. Still, a knockoff into U-turn so Lucario could Aura Sphere was more than enough. And in this game, Luminion gets the Fairy Typing, as well as Hyper Voice and the ability Pixelate. I almost felt bad for Beware here. He got the John Collins treatment. And with the final Porygon back out and scarfed, our ghost type Dekadui captured the fifth badge for us. Hey, look, we can swim. Oh, not really, but I can use the move Surf now. And that opens up so many possibilities. Like the opportunity to fight this sailor in the abandoned ship. There's an encounter beyond him, and it's 50 50, either Kabu Tops or Omastar. All that prep work. Cool. 
I want to see what it goes for. I'm curious. Don't get... Okay. Nice! I had a thing anyway, so I think we would have been fine, but... Glad it worked out. Unreal trainer that just kills Amon 30% of the time. Anyways, Run18 gave us the little Kabu guy. After swimming east of Mauville, I found a cool new village on accident. Crestwood City. For each gym you beat, 6 through 8, you can defeat one of the houses in here for a choice item of your choice. Other than that, it's just a cool pit stop between Mauville and Fortry. The Weather Institute showdown with Team Aqua was next. Shelly was a dog in this hack, equipped with Drizzle Masquerade, Choice Specs Mega Launcher Clowitzer, and Mega Giardos just lurking in the back. I opened with Arcanine to Accelerock Mask. That, of course, led to an instant switch, which I bet on, so Rock Slide instead did so much damage. Now, Clowitzer was stuck using Water Pulse, a move that Water Absorb Jellicent took no issues with. Into Feraligator on Jelly's Ice Beam, I sent in Storm Drain Luminion to wall the oversized lizard. Moonblast did not take kindly to that beast, and Mask was back on the floor. Flip turn into Arcanine, Rock Slide again as Jelly sent in Lantern. We were doing buckets of damage in a hurry. Leaf Blade put Lantern real low as it vault switched out. Mask once again entered the fight, so again, I rock slided. This time, it was Drampa who lost half its HP. Probo Pass was a really good wall here, but I was in a bit of a predicament. Roost and Berserk meant Drampa, barring taking a mean hit from something that I didn't have, was going to continue to drop slightly below half health, get the special attack boost, Roost, and eventually shred my entire team. At plus three, I went for another rock smash. Of course you crit. I killed right here. Oh my God. Oh, oh boy. Oh no way. I didn't know that's what cussed out Barry did. Down with Mask, Luminion would take out Clawitzer the next turn. The Lantern showed itself once more against Tangrowth and managed to burn the Grass Monster before promptly dying. With just Mega Giardos left, Shelly didn't stand a chance versus the big growth. May was the next major obstacle in the final roadblock between us and a shot at the sixth gym. The fight was to be held in permanent grassy terrain and sun, although her opening fairy water Politoed would set rain with drizzle. Sludge Bomb did hella damage to the weird ear that switched in, and then Matt the Bi Sharp pummeled it with Night Slash. Garboder was out third, who I planned to use Flygon to counter. The only issue is that Earthquake and Bulldoze are nerfed in this terrain, and Garbage Odor comes equipped with a brand new move in this hack, Poisonous Graze. What does it do, you might wonder? It's physical poison Volt Switch. It's kind of cool, but I hate it because it's inconvenient for me in this specific moment. I slaughtered Fluttershy with Aqua Jet Caracosta, and then did a whole bunch of pivoting until eventually, Mega Swampert was out representing our rival. Also, I think that I think a heart switching here was a bad play. I think I made a bad decision here. Let's see how it goes. I shouldn't have walked in a nice punch. Don't punish me for it. Do not punish me for it. Please. Please. Dude. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, oh, let's go. Electivire threatened that Altaria and gave us a little momentum by doing a good little chip to pert with Dual Chop. But the real bottom line was that I was going to need a Rockwinid to unfreeze. Thaw out, please. This is the turn. This is the turn. Yes. Admittedly, it took a while to get to that point where anything died. Between the pivots and the grassy terrain recovery, it felt extra good when a rock when it finally got the knockout on Pert. Flygon was on the floor when Toad went down and also oversaw the finale of Yuck Monster. GG's May. Hello, Fortree. The gym leader here is Lucy. Lucy is, as it turns out, a Nuzlocke hater. She has an Overquill, Mega Gengar, and a Naganadel. And forget the raw power for a second, this fight takes place in poisonous conditions. It means that all non-poison Pokemon or Pokemon that benefit from being poisoned are infected with poison at the beginning of the fight. Curable poison, Petra Berries, and rest strategies work, but is that really how I want to invest my learn sets in these fights? It's an oven quill. Wait, who the hell is Lucy? That's what I'm saying. Frick this, frick this guy, right, huh? Huh? All right, Zatsu, get in there, buddy. Don't attack. Use spikes. Use spikes. You don't use spikes. You're hating, bro. Well, that was funny. I think this is poison graze. No, no way this is ever liquid nation, right? I really don't have a reason to switch out here. I always go air slash. Flinch. Didn't get it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I have to think about this. I think this is the one I go to, right? Because this is never... 
Yeah, this is guaranteed knockoff. Yeah, I go here. That's fine. Whatever. Lucy and I had a pivot off, and we settled on Naganadel versus Robopass. Thunder Wave slowed the Ultra Beast to a halt, and Volt Switch into Flygon allowed us to capitalize. Sneasler out next then made our life miserable. It took a good jab at Pinsir, and then it ripped the Poisonous Graze into Overquill. And sure, Bulldoze allowed us to take that guy out, but Drapion out next meant our Sneasler counter was now toast. I had no way to get Pinsir back in later, and then I fumbled. Oh, I should've gone Bulldoze. I should've clicked Bulldoze. I would've had this kill. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Not clicking Bulldoze meant I could never finish the oncoming Sneasler Deathless. My team was battered, my options were limited, and Shadow Tag Mega Gengar was about to take center stage. My counter to that guy was supposed to be Ursaluna, whose health was bottoming out. I needed an absolute miracle. Oh boy. Shut up. Okay. Um, hmm. <sighs> the run's not over. I don't, I still don't know how I'm supposed to beat. Oh, I have a way to beat. I have a way to beat Sneasler. It's not good, but it's, I've got something. Um, okay. I'll just go here. I thought my game froze. I was like, oh no. <laughs> not again. <laughs> okay. With only Amoongus left, I accidentally sacrificed our Magic Bounce Zatu and we carried on. I learned some pretty important lessons in that fight, but I can't complain because we just made it to our best run ever. And then I went to sleep, making one of the riskiest decisions in Nuzlocke, telling myself that I'll get back after it in the morning. I took on one of the choice battles in the AM, the Choice Band Guy. The Choice Band Guy is a back-to-back -back against Sydney, the retired Elite Four member in this hack, and in essence, an 8v6. Fortunately, we pummeled the first four Pokemon, and then it got dicey. All right, round two, this is definitely the harder round. I'm very, very concerned about this Metacham. I think we're gonna be able to really take care of it with uh with Intimidate Drops, but I am worried about it for sure. Uh, Are we faster than this thing right now? I do have a Kabia Berry, so I can stay in. Shark 54. I'm faster. Oh, that was weird. I'll be honest, that's not what I expected there. All right, Metagross. It's choice bands. Do I have protect? I do have protect. So I can find out what it's going to use. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? <clears throat> that's perfect. Okay, cool. I can flip turn because I'm faster. Don't take any damage there. That's perfect. I'm gonna go Rock Smash. I think Rock Smash is the most damaging thing I could do here. Thought it might do that. I imagine it goes into Scrafty. Yeah. Expected a dark move. Get the defense drop. Defense drop. Defense drop. Didn't get it. Okay, that's fine. Okay, this is Drain Punch. I brought in you to do this. Drain. The defense drop there would have been Chef's Kiss, dude. It would have been awesome, but it's okay. I wonder if he stays in or switches out or what. I just go Storm Throw. This could kill. Probably won't. Yeah. Is this knockoff? You suck. Mm, okay. Oh, I should have rested. I wanted to rest there. I would be in such a better position right now. Is rest worth it now? Rest might be worth it right now. Let me just see. Does Scrafty kill me from here? Yeah, Scrafty guaranteed kills me with knockoff and iron head. I'm going to click rest. Rest does work in psychic terrain, right? Not crazy. Trust in chat. Never a good idea, but I did it. Thank you. All right, what we want is double bulk up. Nope, didn't get it. We want bulk up here. Bulk up would be excellent. Bulk up? Nope. All right, well, I'm not really in a better position than I was. I just don't want to be dead to everything on when, like, Metacham or something. Ah, uh, I won't be dead to Thunder Punch. I guess it doesn't really matter in that sense, huh? I got my, I'm going to rest again and reroll. Bulk up. Bulk up. Bulk up. Nope. That's a crit. Okay. If I get double crit, dude, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> Thanks. All right, well, at least it might go for like Iron Head or Drain Punch or something. Drain Punch would be mwah. Go, go Drain Punch, do it. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. That does less damage, which is good. All right, this is this might be where I have to leave it off. Show me bulk up now. Bulk up now would be the best thing ever. Okay. All right, I end up killing it here. It is what it is. We got back a good chunk of health. Yeah, that's fine. All right, this cannot use Thunder Punch. It can use the Never Poison Jabs. This is going to suck. Here we go. Show me close combat, please. Please. Please close combat. Please. I'm begging you to close combat. That would be the most awesome thing I've ever heard. Oh, I should have used Mega Pinsir, dude. This would have been the perfect time to click it. 
attack drop. Show me close combat, please. Close combat. Mm, we're dead to crit right now. It's like super dead to crit right now. Ow. Okay. Uh. Hmm. Wow. Okay. If this goes close combat, we might get cooked. How does this does so much? Like it's such an insane amount of damage. This is actually insane. Okay. I need exactly T punch here. I think this could be literally anything. Well, do I need exactly T punch? No. I would be cool with poison jab or T punch. So it's a 50 50 right now. I could just sack. I could sack lantern here or pincer. Pincer's been so good though. And with the nerf to fairy types, I feel like I want to keep pincer alive. I might sack lantern right now. All right. Let's do it. Show me T punch. Yeah. I couldn't risk it. It wasn't worth risking it. If I had walked into Ursuline on this, the game would have just been over. Go here. Yep. This is so stressful. Please kill. Please kill. Please kill. Please kill. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Luminion was a hard check to this poor Sharpedo and Metagross got locked into Choice Band Earthquake against Air Balloon by Sharp, sending them on to the Shadow Realm. Now, every route in this game has a root boss. Root bosses are just like regular root trainers, except shredded and jacked and ripped and run threatening. Run 18 here gave us a bunch of cool tools for the Route 120 boss that guards us from Mount Pyre and the works, but I don't think I appropriately prepared for grassy terrain and permanent rain conditions. Fake out from Grimmsnarl and a pivot to Talonflame on Bug Buzz was cool, and so was the Flare Blitz that definitely killed the next turn. All right, now I'm going Flare Blitz. Worst thing that could happen? I don't, I, I don't even know. I don't know what the worst thing that could happen is. I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, I think we're good. I guess there's a, if this doesn't kill, I guess. I don't... That didn't kill. We got the burn! I don't think that matters. I think we just lost Talonflame. Why didn't that kill? What am I missing? Hey, dumbass. It's me from the future. Uh, see the rain? Uh, makes fire a little baby type. Little baby guy. Uh, also, dumbass. Cool electric resist berry against the electric type Pokemon. Um, it has a nerf, so it doesn't... It doesn't work. Really got him that that time around. It's cool. We recovered after that by using Pinsir to finish Galvantula, and then we sacked Grimmsnarl to Gallade to gain momentum. We got even more momentum the next turn by letting Pinsir die. And honestly, it was kind of like a snowball avalanche situation because we really gained momentum after letting Draco Zolt go too. And all for this really big payoff. Probopass used Thunder Wave. Nice. And once more again for momentum purposes uh we let probo pass go and Heatmore was able to kill it and route to uh seeing swoobat um so swoobat murdered us and run 18 was over though down i was not dead listen losing battles to stuff i can't control is painful but i fumbled that one all on my own i just needed a second chance and it didn't happen quick. I nearly doubled my attempt number by the time I saw that fight again. Over 75 hours of raw gameplay later, on run 31, I stomped this guy out. Dragalge was a much better opener than Grimmsnarl and sludge bombed that spider. Dragon Tail was a nice touch to punish the opponent for trying to switch. Gallade, who'd cooked us that last time, got punted back into the party immediately after being switched in. Swoobat came out, who Magnazone was primed and ready to deal with. While Discharge didn't paralyze the Gallade that was switched in for a second time like I'd hoped it would, Hatterene is such a strong counter to this sortie guy. Sap Sipper Hasui Gudra was immune to every move Pharaoh could use in this one and withered the tank down with ice beams and dragon pulses. Gudra also conquered Galvantula and chipped in against Rotom Mo before leaving the scene. Dragalge crit the lawn appliance and Magnazone zapped the final Swoobat. I cannot overstate how much easier that fight was this time around. There were lots of things to do now before taking on Tate and Liza. I grabbed so many encounters like this Safari Zone Piplup. I evicted the smelly sailorman from the top of Mount Pyre. I then journeyed to the lava cave with the hot rock men and I took it to Maxi. And sure, the guy opens with Groudon in a back-to-back, -back, but 
Navigating it went so well. Tectonic Drift from Arcanine, a unique move to this game, pulverized the ground fire primal Groudon. The next fight was tougher, but we figured it out. Fire Grass Charm opened in the sun and was terrifying, but Shuckaberry Dragalge ate the earth power and sent Charm packing like the Bucks in the first round of the playoffs last year. Fisharp beat Aerodactyl, Chandler beat Specs Typhlosion, Flash Fire Arcanine was immune to Flare Blitz from Megazard, and even killed Trevenant with Flaring Rush next. And poor Torkoal never stood a chance. Getting through Aqua Hideout was less challenging. I mean, it's not Seafloor Cavern yet, so there's that, but this experience was a much needed break in the pace, which was nice. Peyton lies over the next pit stop, and man, were these guys scary. Permanent Psychic Terrain, Permanent Trick Room, and Permanent Wonder Room in a double battle. I did have to look up what Wonder Room was because I'd never seen it in a battle before, uh, but all Pokemon have their defense stats flipped, so special defense was physical defense and vice versa. This meant Mega Slowbro in this fight was a special defense tank, same with Alolan Marowak. This fight looked brutal, but I had one thing Tate and Liza were never going to be prepared for. Still, I opened with Big Penguin and an Iron Ball Heavy Slam Bronzong that took out Hatterene on the first turn. This, of course, invited out Scrafty, who Hatterene absolutely clobbered two turns later. Then, taking a page out of Wolfie's book, they never saw the VGC legend Incineroar coming. That said, it was a scary pivot. I needed to get our boy in for free here. It's fine. Protect, great. Attack them, Polyon. Yes! Okay. Oh my god. Great turn for us. Great, great, great turn. With that in mind, Marowak now only sees a kill on Empoleon, I think, right? At minus one. What does it see a kill with? Just Flare Blitz? Doesn't even see a kill with Flare Blitz. Oh, but it could. No, no, no. It's going to Stomping Tantrum. Guaranteed Stomping Tantrum. Here we go. Show me what I think I'm getting. Oh, it went for the. Okay, that sucks. It's okay. This will do about. 50%. Oh, less than that. That didn't kill. That's crazy. Oh, reflect. That explains. The Lysopod would flip turn out the next turn into Empoleon, while Incineroar Brick breaked the Oranguru into its grave. Double slow trouble. I was definitely getting a little nervous. Mega Slowbro only had fire and psychic moves, but Sludge Bomb from Slow King really put us in a bad spot. I had to roll this anyways, except the guy set up another Calm Mind and was now staring down kills on both sides. Two knockoffs tried to kill, but failed. What was I supposed to do? All right, at times two, does it see a kill? It sees a kill on Incineroar. Does it see a kill on Empoleon? I don't think it does. Oh, it does. Could be Expanding Force or Flamethrower. I'm protecting. Let's do it. This is a risk, but I'm taking it. Whew. Show me Flamethrower over there. Show me Flamethrower. Show me Flamethrower. Not for my boy. Okay. This doesn't always kill, but it does most of the time. Seven whole badges was a crazy cool accomplishment in this demon of a hack. Now, all we had to do was clear the Moss Deep Space Center of Team Magma. The Moss Deep Space Center tag fight is reminiscent of the Radical Red Silphco tag battle. Incredibly hard opponents with Megas stare down you and your useless partner. Seriously, Steven, they open with Drought Heatmore. You brought three steel types. Did you even read the docs? I opened with Incineroar and fake outed the Cherim, hoping Bronzong would do something. Dude set up Reflect to save us from the damage that Heatmore was going to do. There is a stun boosted special attack crazed Cherim staring us down with great coverage. And that's what you did for us. But hey, I tried to save Bronzong anyways by switching into Flashfire Houndoom because I'm a nice guy. And this ability works like Storm Drain in this hack. But Cherim, maniacally laughing presumably, fired off an Earth Power on the Hunk of Metal instead. Heatmore hit us with that Flashfire boost, which was nice, I guess. But Cherim was able to clear Steven's Lucario as well before I could do anything about it. And our Flamethrower, Sun Boosted and Flashfire Boosted, left Cherim at 1 HP. Being clean swept by a Cherum was so embarrassing. How does this impact LeBron's legacy? I think you guys should ponder that instead because I, I, I really don't want to focus on what's going on here. Uh, Cherum took down Houndoom in one last insulting and humiliating blow as Life Orb damage finished the flower. I sent Insin back in, but 
I'll be honest, we were down three casualties to one in this showdown. Things weren't looking great. Fake out on Tyfe into Power Gem from Steven's Probo. Put that thing at real low HP. Robo killed it the next turn as I protected. I had some momentum finally. Little did I know I was about to get absolutely farmed. We'll see if I regret this, but I think that Probo goes for protect here. Please go for protect here. Please protect Probo. Please, 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 please. Of course he didn't. Why would it do? That doesn't make sense to do. I just wanted to get some damage off. That's fine. Fine, and then Heatmore attacks first, which is good here, hilariously. Wait, does Parting Shot not work after this? Dude. Oh my god. It was just me and my two fire types left, Incineroar and Chandelure. And Chandelure would get immediately crit by times two Dragon Claw, and Incineroar would succumb to Roost Mega Zard just toying with him. That was run 31. Once more, thank you to Holzkern for sponsoring this video. Guys, get your products before May 7th by clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code on screen. Thank you to our Patreon subscribers for supporting me and making this video happen. Fairy, Dream, Frosty, Typhon, Prita, Tyler, Matt, John, Chad, and Grant, our VIP Plus members. You guys are my goats. Catch you guys next time.